Today I'm looking again at the Orange Pi. So the Orange Pi, I recently did a video connecting it to Amazon Web Services, AWS IoT. Um, today I'm going to connect it to ThingSpeak. Now uh, ThingSpeak is a, a site that I've been using for a while and in fact it uh, it's currently gathering um, analytics from our potting shed in the garden. So um, in a previous video I've, I've shown my Things, ThingSpeak page here which is reading various sensors in the potting shed and sending them to the internet. But uh, Things, ThingSpeak is quite an interesting site and recently they've started supporting uh, MQTT so which is a Internet of Things protocol. So I just thought I would go through connecting the Orange Pi to ThingSpeak using MQTT because it's quite an interesting and straightforward exercise. So first of all let me just look at the Orange Pi So if we look at this script that I've written, um, what we've got here, we're using this library called Paho, which is a MQTT client. And here I'm going to be connecting to the ThingSpeak website and sending a simple message. I'm going to show you how to set all that up. So if I go on to ThingSpeak, and instead of using my Internet of Shed channel, I'm going to create a new channel specifically for this. So let me go back out of channels here. I'm going to say new channel. Just give this a name. IoT. I'm going to say sensors on the orange pie. OK. Field labels. So just for example, I'll put temperature there and I'll have field two, which says pressure. And then we'll save the channel. So first of all, we need to remember this number here. This is the, the channel ID. Uh, so let's grab the channel ID. We'll go back to the orange pie here. Oh, what's that read only? Hang on a sec. Okay. Edit the file. Right, so channel ID. Also delete the API key because that's an old one. So now we'll look in API keys here. And ThingSpeak has automatically generated this new API key for me that will uh, describe this IoT page that I've created. So we'll put that into our script also. And then write that. So if you have a look what we've got here when we do the publish this is the URL that gets built so you've got channels and then that will insert in the channel ID slash publish and then this will insert the API key so the URL's got both the channel ID and the API key in it and if we look a bit further along here The, these, this is the data field here, so we've got field 1 equals 24, so remember that was the one that I said was going to be the, the temperature, and field 2 was the pressure, so I've put 1014 for that. So when I run this, it should actually 
write a couple of values to ThingSpeak via MQTT. So if we go into private view here, so we can see that the charts are completely empty at the moment. We've got two things being tracked. We've got temp here and we've got pressure here as we set up. So I'll go back to the orange pie and we'll run that. Run the script. Doesn't show much, but if we now go back to the channel, and there we go. So a first dot just appeared there. So that gives us the 24 degrees. And here we've got the 1014 as the pressure reading. So it really is as simple as that. So you can quite easily write a bit of Python script to regularly send values to the internet. So let me let me just illustrate. I'll just change the data values that I'm sending. So that, oh, that's the wrong name. I'll just change the data values. So let's put 26 in there. And we'll say 1013. And we'll run the script again. Go back to things speak. And there we go. So there's a second value just arrived on the on the graph there. It's gone down from 1014 to 1013. So it's really very powerful and very simple and uh, I just wanted to share that with you because it's a, it's actually much easier than the old method that they had for sending data into into things speak. Okay, thanks very much for watching. If you uh, enjoyed my latest video, please give me a thumbs up. Um, and please tune in for my future videos.